Rhys Jones in the square with Hunter, but Rhys Jones has got it. Do I keep it the back as Rhys Jones? How about that? Long kick down towards full forward, one out contest. Rhys Jones in front, does brilliantly. Three goals to Rhys Jones. Gives it to Rhys Jones, he'll have to kick it quickly, he does so. And puts it on. A lovely kick to Brerard, and he should mark this. Oh, he didn't mark it because Rhys Jones put him under enormous pressure. David Rhys Jones is the Norm Smith medalist. Uh, magnificent stuff. G'day, everybody. I'm Andrew Maher. Welcome to The Blueprint. Well, the man you just saw on those highlights, magnificent ones that they were, as our guest co-host this week while Mark McClure is away. David Rhys-Jones joins us on The Blueprint. Rhys, magnificent to have you here. Great to be here. Uh, big shoes to fill. It, well, they are big shoes to fill, but you're just the man to do. And our special guest on The Blueprint is standing skipper of the Carlton Footy Club, Mark Murphy. Murph, great to have you on the show. Thanks, Andy. Good to be here. Welcome to The Blueprint on debut. Let's make sure it's not the last time you're on this show because people are very keen to hear what you've got to say, young man. Uh, looking forward to it. Now, before we get stuck into you, Murph, David was a fantastic player. We just saw that in the opening package of the show. But there was another side to his game for which he has become infamously infamously renowned for. Let's uh, have a look at some of these highlights. And Reese, join in. And Murph, if you're disgusted by any of the things we're about to have a look at, feel free to pipe up yourself. You were a colourful character. I don't know what you're doing here. We'll roll this vision. You're taking a man who's twice as big as you in Cloakie. What Did Cloakie well, do something to you this day? Well, I've got an excuse for all of these, actually. Right. I, was, I, I did get reported 25 times, but I have got an excuse for every single time. Well, what was... OK, what did Don... Well, Donald oh, well, McDonald's give you a little he, one there. He one back. That was only a... Yeah, it was only an exhibition, that game. That was the London game, of course. That's a fair exhibition. Now, this is the one I'm really keen to get you to talk about. That's a runner there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd actually been reported about four times before that. and, and, and someone In that was, game? In that game. Someone was swinging off the family jewels, and, uh, oh. <laughs> and I thought it was a runner, and he looked as guilty as anyone. And, and, and the ironic thing is, the runner that day in 1981 for Melbourne was a bloke called Peter Smith, who just so happened to be Norm Smith's son. <laughs> so... Uh, that's not bad, is it? I wake this kid and won his medal. The good story about that, too, is that uh, Pete Smith is one of Robert Walls' great mates, and Wallsy was the coach who was behind you winning that Norm Smith medal back in 87, of course. Yeah, he was, and, and, and look, I mean, walsy has got to take the credit there, I suppose. I don't think no, there's anyone else on the, on the match committee who wanted me to play on Dermot, though, and, uh, yeah, it all worked well that day. Uh, you two caught up with one another on Friday before we pull apart the game on Sunday afternoon. You two spent some time together on Friday at the... Uh, Tamer Tiger 72-82 reunion. Was yeah. that a good day? Yeah, it was a good day. Good to um, you know, catch up with a few of the, the older players who have obviously represented the club and uh, yeah, sat on, sat on the table with Big Nick and Alex Jezelenko and Robert Walls and spoke to Dave himself. So it was, uh, it was good to see a few um, you know, past greats of the club and spend a bit of time and hear some of the stories. The spirit of Carlton days are alive and well, Reese. There's been some real life breathed into that. Yeah, look, we're, we're pretty fortunate. We've got a great history and we're able to, uh, you know, win quite a lot of premierships and we do celebrate, you know, the anniversaries of them. So it's great. 22 points was the margin on Sunday at the end of it. What was the general feeling in the wash-up to the game? You busted your chops to stay in that game when they looked like they were going to blow you away early. What was yeah. the general sense after the match? Um, oh, we'll, we weren't really happy with the way, obviously, the game panned out, losing to Sydney, but um, we are happy with the, the intensity and the effort from the guys. Probably a few easy goals that they kicked that um, you know, we looked at the tape on uh, yesterday and, and saw some, uh, some, some things that we could change and, and sort of work on at training um, during this week and, and hopefully prevent those, uh, those goals from happening uh, you know, going forward. Yeah. And they're a very disciplined team, the Swans, mm -hmm. and I think that's one thing that will carry them a long way into the finals, especially if they pick up a couple of home finals as well. Yeah, they're extremely disciplined and they, uh, once you get out, um, get out of the loop, there's always someone that will cover you. Um, and they're just, um, they're very vocal out there and very demanding on each other. And that's something we can sort of try and take from their game and bring it into our own. I was going to ask whether they're sort of side, as a group, you can learn a bit from? Yeah, well, you can, you can learn from um, a lot of the good sides mm. uh, with, with, you know, things that they, they do out there on the ground. And, um, you know, we're still a young group, a pretty young side out there on the weekend. And um, those things that I learned from the way they, they went about it as well. And, you know, we'll take that um, going to the last four games of the year and into the pre-season you know, next year. How sorely missed has Jared Wade been to both of you guys? You're a mm. student of the game and you're out there playing at the moment. His absence yeah. has been felt, hasn't it? Yeah, well, he, he just creates a great contest and, and takes those grabs. We're, we've probably been, been missing that. And he, um, you know, he's missed 10 or 12 weeks of footy. And the way he's come, come back in and kicked, I think, 3 3 and, and just provided that target for us, he was, um, you know, he was pretty special out there. So it's, he's been sorely missed, but um, yeah, we just need to try and keep Jared out there as, 
as long as we can, um, you know, in the years that he's got left in his body. But um, He's one of those players who's got a real presence out in the field. I mean, yeah. there's not many players who have a presence out there, but I reckon a few of the opposition will be really nervous yeah. around him. Yeah, well, he does. He's, um, yeah, he does have a presence about him. He's, he's pretty aggressive in the way he tackles and, and uh, attacks the footy. So, he's, yeah, as, as I say, he's been you know, sorely missed, but um, hopefully we can keep him out there for the next four weeks yeah. and then get him through a pre-season and keep him out there you know, more times than not next year. Could he be even better with a genuine monster around him? If you could find, you know, I don't want to mention the cloak name, but if you could get somebody like that, if Levi Casbolt or one of these young guys can become that sort of monster target sooner rather than later, do you reckon Jared becomes even more dangerous? Yeah, well, it obviously helps having some big targets up there. I reckon Levi's been you know, pretty impressive in his, in his three games that he's mm. played for the club the last three weeks. And... Um, in that last quarter, he took some took some good grabs, and if you can get two big blokes firing up there, it's um, you know it's going to help us enormously with with the small guys at their feet. The injuries. Uh, sorry, Russ, I, was, I was just going to say one of the other things with Wadey too is that um, you know he's a lot more versatile, and he's being forced to play forward a lot more. Yeah. And, and where he's played in the wing, he's played back yeah. uh, more or less forced to play forward now. Yeah, he's, he's a bit of a freak athlete, mm. uh, Wade. He can, he can go down back or play on the wing, go through the midfield, but he's, he's probably best suited to us playing forward. And um, there's, there's probably not too many defenders who can go one-on-one -on -one with him, with his uh, athleticism and the way he um, you know, attacks the ball and, and creates contest. It's nice to see the number 26 jumper again out there doing its thing in the navy blue. It's been a while between drinks before we've had one to really distinguish the jumper. And we look like we've got one. He's pretty competitive uh, individual Andy McGuinness? It's one of those things where you really do, um, I mean, you do, you look at the number, it's a number I wore, you yep. know, for 100 games, I'm the last one on the locker and I can't wait for someone else to get on it. But he, he's terrific, he's, he's a lot more defensive than what I was, but uh, he does all the right things and, and that's the key to a good defender. Do you like him, Murphy? He looks yeah. like he's made of the right stuff this yeah, week. He just plays his role and he's aggressive and he's, he got an opportunity to play on Adam Goods on the weekend and did that pretty well and he's, as you see there, he's third off support and um, willing to help his teammates has been really good and uh, you know from someone playing I think five games which he's played he's, he's looked pretty accomplished back there yeah. There's the upside isn't it in terms of if you're going to have to carry a huge injury list through a year there's the upside that you flush out yeah. one, two, three or maybe even four players that you didn't necessarily know had something to offer that maybe yeah. they do. Yeah well that's right at the start of the year if you thought Tommy Bell yeah. and Levi and, and Andy McGuire are all going to get uh, a few games and Fraser Dale as well it's um it's, although it's disappointing having blokes who have missed a lot of footy with injuries, um, you get to see some of the young guys come through and have, have actually played some good footy for us. And the one thing is, I mean, obviously final top four was uh, before the season an, an, an ambition for the club, but uh, what's the ambition now? I mean, realistically and mathematically, we're still a chance. Yeah, we're still a chance mathematically to, to get there. Um, as that old footy saying, you try and take it a week at a time, but we've got a few things that we want to work on over the next month of footy and, and try and get a little bit of that respect back that we've probably lost a little bit from last year yeah. um, from opposition sides. So um, that's a real big focus you know, over the next month is trying to get that, a bit of that respect back and, and play some good footy. Simon White and Cade Simpson have taken different paths getting into that side on the weekend yeah. this year. We know what's happened to Cade Simpson and Simon White's been one we've been hoping could, he could get some continuity into his footy. Um, tell us about their contributions on the weekend. Yeah, it was um, a big effort for Simo to come back after only missing three weeks. Um, we call him Roddy Ashman at the moment with his, uh, <laughs> with his helmet out there. I don't think he really liked it too much. How long much. is he going to wear it for? He, oh, I don't know how long it'll last. Yeah. He reckons with the way he played in the weekend, it won't last too many more weeks. <laughs> right. But um, no, it, was, it was a big effort from Simo to come back and, and to, to get an injury like he did. Um, he's still got the, the braces and the elastic bands yeah. on his teeth, so he's... Um, He's got a double mouth guard at the moment, so he's, um, I think he's looking forward to getting that off. But to see Whitey come in and, and do his role and, and look pretty accomplished as well, he's, he's missed a bit of footy with that knee. So um, to see two, two blokes come back in and, and do a rough the side was good. Now, you're a brutal lot, footballers, you blokes. You don't like letting any of your teammates get too far ahead of themselves. And we just saw that Simon White mark there, which has been a nominee for the mark of the week. And Jared Wade, who we've already talked about, I know you both, you're active on Twitter, and Reese, you, you should be. He actually tweeted today, well done, Whiteman43. That's uh, Simon White's Twitter account name, of course. Nominated for mark of the year. Hashtag mark of the year. Hashtag open your eyes. Now, it's a fantastic mark. And if we have a look at the super slow-mo again, Jared Wade's obviously noticed something here about the mark as it was taken and he's going to make the young fella pay for that. The eye shut as he latches onto the footy. You're a brutal lot. Can't you just let the bloke have his moment in the sunshine and enjoy it? No, you'd think so, but um, I think Wade's 
you know, had a fair bit of airtime this year <laughs> with, uh, with the Wag Nation. So um, I think he's trying to deflect a little bit of attention off himself. Reese, have you watched much of Wag Nation this year? No, I haven't. No, I watched uh, one episode. I flicked it over and saw Jared uh, on, on Fox 8. And Jared <laughs> was on there going? and I wondered what it was about and I watched about five minutes. How's it been going, Murph? Give us your, your absolutely expert critique of Wag Nation. Uh, well, there's not too much to say, I reckon. <laughs> no. I probably thank God it's over. But um, yeah. I think... Uh, yeah, we'll push on anyway. Yeah, we'll push on. Jamo's, <laughs> Jamo's done the hammy. Not sure how bad it is, but he'll be out. Yeah, not too sure. I think he had scans yesterday. Um, we've got the day off today, so haven't heard as yet um, what the result is. But um, he was playing some, some good footy for us. He was, uh, you know, he takes that big, big strong uh, forward or resting ruckman down there. So it's a, a bit of a loss for us if he misses a couple of weeks. Who would come in? Who would be? Have you had a ready-made sort of way that we, the, the footy team might actually cover? He's such an instructionally important player, is there? Um, uh, probably the height that he's got. There's mm. probably not a lot at the moment, but we've got Nick Dog and he'll probably come back in. Um, someone yeah. White can go back down there. And you're up against Jonathan Brown this week. I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah, who means him? Yeah. yeah, well, it's probably a job for us midfielders not to let it get down there too much. So, um, yeah, we'll try and try and get the ball going forward as much as possible and, and don't let uh, you know, Jonathan Brand get too much of a run out of you know, I, one-on-one. I know Luke Mitchell plays at the other end of the ground, just in terms of players who might come in between now and the end of the year. Some Carlton supporters think he's the next John Coleman, the way they're talking about him. He's kicked five on the yeah. weekend. How's he, how's he, we know that he's had the three yeah. shoulders. How's he tracking? Yeah, he's tracking really well. He kicked four uh, the previous two weeks ago. Yep. So he's kicked um, ten in the last three weeks, I think. So... Uh, yeah, as you said, he's done three shoulders. I think he's just getting a little bit more confidence in, in his body now. Um, and it's starting to show by kicking goals and doing the right things. Whether, whether or not he gets a crack at it, um, I'm not too sure. But he's doing everything right. He's training really well. So um, he, there's another one that could get a go, along with Levi and, and Tommy Bell and Fraser and um, Andy McGuinness. So, you know, blooding some young guys who can you know, get an opportunity to, uh, to represent the Navy Blue, which is good. Do you like that, Reese? as a theory, as a selection philosophy, yeah. end of the year? You know, if a guy comes out... Wacky young bloke in? I think it's great. I think, you know, the opportunity we've got, we're not going to win the flag this year, so we might as well um, put some players out there and have a look at them and, and, You're and see what they're You're supposed to butt in now and say, of course we can still win the flag at this time of year. We, we can still win the next four, hopefully, <laughs> exactly. and, um, and, make and a then run give at ourselves it. a chance. So, exactly. Yeah, make a run of it. But, 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 but at the end of the day, I mean, getting some game yep. time into these kids yep. is, is uh, you know, it's just going to spur them on over pre-season and, and give them something to look forward to next year. How are you enjoying the leadership role? It's, um, it seems to sit pretty comfortably with you. Yeah, I've, I've enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, with Juddy obviously missing uh, a month of footy, I've had it for the last three weeks and uh, been working on my leadership skills all year. But um, yeah, to, to be given the reins and to toss the coins has been a new thing. <laughs> but um, no, I've enjoyed it. Uh, I'm learning each week. Uh, but been, been supported pretty well with Andy Carazzo as well and, and Heath Scotland and, and Gibbsy. Uh, the boys are getting right, right behind me. And um, yeah, it's good sort of just trying to... Uh, you know, bring a young young group through, which we've had the last sort of three weeks. So well, you, to- you mentioned tossing the coin. You did it twice, and we won twice. Yeah, and you mate. sent Jared Wade out there on the What's weekend, and yeah. we lost the game. Yeah, well, we had the one fiftieth last week for any Carazzo and Carrot said, "I oh, just just toss the coin. Don't worry about it." But Wade was pretty uh, pretty keen to get out there and and try and toss the coin. I'm two from two from doing <laughs> that, so uh, I think I'll get out there this week and, and toss the coin. Are you getting impatient? You're 25 now. You're into your next year will be your eighth year of senior footy. Are you yeah. starting to get a little bit fed up with being around the mark? Do you want to? Sort of getting to that point where you really want to make a bit of a statement as a group. Uh, yeah, it's it's definitely frustrating when um, when you're watching September football and, and finals are going on, and uh, last year just missing out against West Coast and then seeing them play the following week. It's it's frustrating seeing uh, you know opposition sides go out there that you think you can match it with and, and beat um, playing at that point in September. So. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 a long year. It's it's a marathon, really. Twenty two games. So you got you got to make sure you're winning more games, and not obviously to, to give yourself the best opportunity. And unfortunately, this year we haven't done that. So um, there's still four games to go, which can try and win. Is obviously try and win all four and gives that, give ourselves an opportunity. But um, yeah, it's definitely frustrating and something you, you definitely really want to do is is play on that big stage in in September. Now, Reese, after the show, we do this thing called the Google Plus Hangout, where the special guests on the show uh, are available to supporters of the club to answer their questions, and Murph's going to be doing it later on. People like um, Sellers and Andy McKay and Sticks and Juddy have been doing the Google Plus Hangouts after the show. Half a dozen blokes here and there put their hand up and say, yeah, we wouldn't mind asking some questions via the Facebook page. 250 women <laughs> have requested to be part of the Google Plus Hangout. What, to talk to me? No, not you, <laughs> to talk to him. They're claiming is, You know that people are calling you the, the Justin Bieber of the AFL. You're aware of this, aren't you? <laughs> 
Yeah, Andy's obviously better than that. <laughs> obviously, that sits pretty comfortably with you. But Mark Murphy is in the Google Plus Hangout after the show. Um, some questions from our viewers. Emily is asking, how have you felt about the captaincy in the absence of Chris Judd? Is it something you do feel comfortable with if or when your time comes to do it on a more regular basis? Yeah, I do feel pretty comfortable doing it. It's, um, I've sort of been a leader throughout all my junior footy, um, captaining various sides. But, uh, yeah, obviously with Juddy there at the moment, it's, it's someone you know, it's pretty, pretty good to learn from over the last five years, which he's been at the club. So um, whether he's there for another three or four, I'm happy to sit underneath him. But, um, yeah, if the time comes, it'll be a great opportunity. So you won't be having a word to him and saying, look, Chris, yeah, you've, had, you've had your time in the sun. You know, it's my turn to, yeah. to get in there. No, I haven't said that as yet. But, um, <laughs> no, I let him know last week that I was two from two, but obviously two from three now. But uh, hopefully we can make that three from four. Do you have week. the C alongside your name in the footy record? Ever? No, um, I had a lot of things. <laughs> an, aster- an asterisk normally on, um, on Brownlow night. <laughs> you got used to that. Nicholas is asking on Facebook, what do you do in your spare time when you're not playing, Mark? Uh, oh, catch up with a few of the boys. Um, playing a bit of table tennis last night at uh, Jordan inspired Russell's. Inspired by the Olympics? Yeah, getting inspired by yeah. the Olympics, exactly right. Yeah. But um, no, don't, don't mind a bit of uh, table tennis. Last night took Jordan Russell uh, down at his home court at his yeah. joint, so that was good fun. It's an exciting life they lead these days, Rhys. They're playing table tennis. Yeah. What did you use to, We don't actually want to know what you used to get, what you used to, get up to. I think it's well known. Yeah, I think it probably is. And I'll ask you a question. comes from James. How are you pre- This is coming early from James. I don't know where he, whether he knows something, but how are you preparing yourself for life after footy? Uh, yeah, only 25, but um, a lot of the boys do a little bit of work experience here and there. Uh, I've done a little bit uh, with a project manager just going around to sit in on a few meetings and get a little bit of experience that way. So yeah. guys are either doing a TAFE course or a uni course or getting a little bit of work experience. So Roddy Ashman's taking control of that down there at the Are club. you talking about Kate Simpson no, or Roddy Ashman? Simo, no, not Simo, no. The real Rod Ashman. So uh, he's good with trying to help out young guys you know, get something behind them. It's good to see him playing the footy the way he plays his footy, isn't it? He's fantastic, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's all we've got time for today, but you can join, as we said, Mark Murphy on the Google Plus Hangout after the show to keep the conversation going. Remember, you can tweet or email us comments and questions via Twitter, hashtag the blueprint, or email the club with the blueprint in the subject line at blues at carltonfc.com.au. Ruth, you've been absolutely magnificent. A bit overdressed, I might say, <laughs> filling in for uh, for uh, Mark McClure, who will be back next week. You've, you've done a fantastic job. Yeah, well, I do work. Mark does it. Yeah, it's so, a very uh, good point. And Murph, uh, we appreciate you coming on the show. All the very best nice. against the Brisbane Lions on the weekend. Cheers. We'll be back at the same time next week, 1 p.m. 1 p.m. right here through the carltonfc.com.au website. That's it for today. Thanks for joining us, and until then, bye for now. <laughs>